title for my lecture is Playing with Power. Philip's objectives included the overthrow of the Protestant rule in England in the person of his former sister-in-law, Elizabeth I, and in putting a stop to the English meddling in Spanish affairs in the Netherlands and elsewhere. As Spain's armada was massing in late 1587, the Lord Admiral's men in England bought Tamburlaine the Great from the aspiring playwright Christopher Marlowe and performed it with the young Edward <coughs> Allen in the title role. Their patron, Charles Howard, the Lord High Admiral, might have seen an early performance before affairs of state diverted him. By the end of the year, he was taking the fleet to sea as the English commander-in-chief. Some months later, Howard's forces, assisted, it must be said, by both Spanish maritime incompetence and the fortunate intervention of the natural elements, ensured the dispersal and defeat of the Armada. By then, Alain was retired from the stage, but one wonders if his conscience was ever tweaked about the caged animals when he remembered the predicament of Bajazef in Tamburlaine, whose wife, Zabina, cries, being thy captain, thus abuse his state, keeping his kingly body in a cage, or Alain's own lines as Tamburlaine to Helibinus, if thou wilt love the wars and follow me, thou shalt be made a king and reign with me, keeping in iron cages emperors. The prologue has prepared London theatre-goers, drawing them into the performance with, will lead you to the stately tent of war, where you shall hear the Scythian Tamburlaine and so on. That word stately would have an impact on the consciousness at this time of war, and on the imagination. Remember. These words uh, are a part of the opening sentence of the so-called Baines Note. It was the affidavit of Richard Baines, uh, which was handed to the authorities three days before Marlowe's violent death. You can personate power. You can play with power. But don't expect power to reciprocate. That, it, I think it's quite important to discriminate the, the church going one way and the what, uh, Burley and the Sikh Turks going the there other way. There were many yeah. powers. The most brilliant line in all of literature about a woman is this the face that launched a thousand mm -hmm. ships. But when you mentioned Dr Faustus, you seem to suggest it was a much more traditional kind of a play. I'm thinking of that kind of like English tragic acting tradition, really? The move Dolly used to say, he is obviously uh, an inheritor of Alain's skill. Mm. And I don't think I need to say any more, but thank you very much. It was absolutely fantastic, well worth going to see. Um, the lecture covered many areas, um, and it started off with the history, um, so the Catholic um, Armada, and how relevant that was to Marlowe's plays, and the opening of the Rose. Um, and he talked about Alain um, as well. And uh, yeah, it was, absolutely, it was absolutely fantastic. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, Frank taught me at school um, and had exactly the same kind of passion and directness and sense of performance as well. He's a fantastic speaker and very enthusiastic and knowledgeable, so I very much enjoyed it. But I'm a big fan of Marlowe. And also, what was lovely is it had history, it had politics. Yeah, but for us, I suppose, you know, because we're interested in theatre, um, it had aspects of the performance, and in particular, it's always fascinating to know or to, or to un try and understand how these plays were performed. Absolutely excellent, really engaging, and quite poetic as well. Uh, could you tell us why it's so important for us to remember Marlowe? Well, I think, as I've said uh, during the course of the afternoon, Marlowe is, is the first of our great dramatists and immediately influenced Shakespeare, obviously, uh, but also the other great dramatists of what is the golden age of English drama, unquestionably. So he was the first and one of the most important. And the quality of... Uh, of, of Marlowe's language, which so infected 
the people who came after. It was fundamental to the quality of what happened later. I also think the other thing is that Marlowe has been out of fashion for some reason for the last few decades, and I do think it's high time that he came back into fashion. Um, although I was talking about Marlowe, the Rose, and Edward Alain sort of in situ 400 years ago, I was at pains to point out, particularly I think with, um, uh, with, with, with uh, Tamburlaine uh, and with the Jew of Malta, that they have things to say to us very, very immediately today in the distracted world in which we live.